Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Scharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles, and with me is Dr. Andrea Moskowitz. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, and I'm a neuroscientist and psychiatrist. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It is going well. Um, I got an email, and okay. uh, it's from Emily, who's from Flagstaff, Arizona, and this is her question for us. Okay. I feel like I have been hearing so much nutrition talk about a range of different diets that I should be following, and I have no idea who to trust or how to figure out which diet is best for me. There's the paleo diet, intermittent fasting, gluten-free, vegetarian, and a million other different health crazes I can't seem to get a grasp on. I'm really just trying to eat healthier and choose a diet that is going to nourish my body and better my health. So how do I navigate this world of conflicting ideas on healthy eating to figure out which diet is actually best for me? Thank you so much, Emily. It's a great question. It's a great question. It's a question that I'm asked all the time. Right. Because you have a lot of these buzzy diets that come up. Right. And also, I think we should walk away from the word diet and maybe use the word eating plan because a diet seems to be for people something that they go on. Right. And then when they get to where they want to be, they get off. Right. And a lot of these best-selling diets are really too restrictive to to sustain. Right. Um, So I think it would be a good idea. Let's go through some of these diets and (laughs) realize that there's not one diet that's good for everybody. Or eating plan. Or eating plan. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, and there's some of them that are a little bit just downright really don't make sense. Right. Um, so go ahead. Which which one? Where do, where do you want to start? Okay. So what I want to start with is there's a concept called blue to make. Okay. To add more, you know, um, hopefully not to add more confusion. But okay, there's a thing called blue zone diets. Okay. So let me talk about those a little bit. So blue zones are areas in the world that have the highest number of people who are healthy and living over the age of 100 and lower rates of dementia. Okay. Okay. So these include, I mean, a lot of them are small areas. Okay. These include, um, there's a a place in Turkey, Icaria, Turkey, Sardinia, Italy, Loma Linda, California, actually. And we'll talk about that is in a minute. Okay. Nicoya Peninsula, Costa Rica, and Okinawa, Japan, which I think people are, are maybe more familiar with the Okinawa, right. Japan one, only because there's a book out called The Okinawa Diet. Right, because right. there are a lot of centurions living in Okinawa. Or actually, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. There were. There were. <laughs> All right. Now, okay. now you have my interest. <laughs> okay. So, and also, let me explain the Loma Linda, California, because people will probably be shocked. Like, really, there's some place in the United States, you know? Um, now, this was not... If you remember your history, this was not the secret uh, Ponce de Leon Fountain of Youth site that he was looking for in Florida. Um, the reason that happens is because it happens that in Loma Linda, we'll get to this, there's a, 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 it's a very large community of Seventh-day Adventists, and they're vegetarian, and they don't eat caffeinated products, they drink caffeinated products or eat them. They don't um, have alcohol at all. Right. And they don't smoke. Okay. So, which probably helps also. Yes. But, but some of these other places, people do smoke. So, And this was part of their religion. That's their, part of their religion. That they right. they know to eat and drink this way. Right. And or not. Yeah. So, exactly. So interesting. So uh, it is, it's part of their religion. Right. Um, just like kosher for us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, although the diets differ, they all have the following things in common. So they're all very highly plant based. Um, the a lot of the protein um, comes from nuts, beans, and whole grains. And it, for those who aren't in Loma Linda, if the animal products that they use are like eggs, fish, uh, and and small, very small amounts of grass fed, free range meat, mm. um, or poultry, they have whole wheat or sourdough breads. 
a very low intake of sugar or sweetener, and um, desserts that contain them are only special treats. And by sweetener, I mean only natural sweeteners. Right. So we're talking sugar, honey, um, maybe maple syrup. Maybe they maple have access syrup to it, right? Yeah, maybe, and fruit. I, I assume they're eating a lot of fruit. fruit, right? But this is I'm talking about like big, you know, like, big. Yeah, they eat a lot of fruit, um, and they mainly drink water, herbal teas, and green teas. There's low amounts of, actually, not so much dairy. And then dairy they have is usually from goats or sheep, who are free rain, who are free grazing. Right. Um, some of them also drink alcohol, but it's usually something like red or rice or rice wines, and they may have them fairly regularly, actually, but small amounts. Mm. And some a, a number of them also drink coffee. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you one thing. So getting back to our, to Okinawa, so right. it, the, you know it, it's just a fairly a very healthy kind of well balanced eating plan. Um, not highly processed foods, and a lot of like good tasting foods, things like that. And I'm sure very seasonal also. Very seasonal also, and a lot of them too. You know, food they eat, but food is also it's like a social thing. You sit together. Um, I didn't think that probably. I don't think there's any studies, but it probably helps your digestion. and Right, to be in that parasympathetic mode when you're eating and right. not stressed not and stress rushing eating. Right. around. Exactly. Um, but there's a sober study from Japan. So since 1990, actually in Okinawa, things have not been going as well. Longevity has decreased and rates of mortality from heart disease, strokes, um, have significantly increased. Why is that? So what's happened during that time is Okinawa has gone more Western and they're eating more meat. They're starting to eat fast foods and they have less intake of, they eat a lot of seaweed actually. Okay. The coastal area. And their intake of red and yellow vegetables has decreased. So, and now they're paying the price. Right. And more, you know, white rice. And yeah, yeah, now they're paying the price. So So. one of the Mediterranean diet, is is found in the blue zones. Right, and right. The Mediterranean diet is high in fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, olive oil, low in animal protein, particularly red meat. Um, and this diet, they have studied a lot, right? right? There's a lot of studies on it. Yeah, so um, this diet also stuck around. There are a lot of fad diets that come and go, but people continue to come back and hold up the Mediterranean diet as like, this is really the what's the holy grail (laughs) right well Um, it's it's kind of close i mean you know um but it it, the the studies do show that it's it really delivers long-term health and well-being right so i'll just tell you there was a couple of big studies on it and they actually have done now they've done the mediterranean diet with different variations okay like with more olive oil with added nuts um and they basically found, though, for all of them, there's some differences, but basically for all of them, as you said, the risk of death from um, heart attacks, from strokes, from cardiovascular disease decreased significantly. Um, a, a big, there's a reduced risk of developing adult onset of type 2 diabetes decreased by 50%, which is wow, huge. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. Right. And it also decreased uh, blood pressure, it decreased blood sugar. Um, it increased good fats in the blood, and um, it increased inflammatory markers. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, it is a real. I mean, it's the way to go. I'm not going to say for some. There might be some people right. out there. It's not the perfect right. diet, and they need tweaks and stuff like that. Okay. It's getting close there. Uh huh. To it. right. Um, yeah. And and it's also, I mean, it's probably a little bit better for the environment because it limits the, you know, amount of meat that you're eating, which is both, you know, that's financially and environmentally exactly. harder. Um, and it, it does include a lot of fish. Right. Um, so it's almost more of a pescatarian diet. And it does allow for the occasional glass of red wine. Yeah, actually a couple of glasses a week that's, you can yeah. have with it. Yeah, can't argue with that. I was going to say that. <laughs> say, but hold on. It lets you have that. Um, you know, it also lets you have like a lot of whole, whole grains, whole grain breads, whole grain pastas, you know, it, it, right. so for people who, I mean, think about the Mediterranean countries and what people eat there. Right. Yes. You can, you can picture it. Right. You can totally picture it. You know. Um, so there's another term out there called clean eating. 
Uh-huh. Which is not one specific diet, like the Mediterranean diet. Right. It just means like, you know, not indulging in processed foods and that come in boxes and go for more natural options. Okay. Um, so some people have an issue with clean eating because they say, what's the opposite of clean eating? <laughs> it's like dirty it's eating. Dirty eating. <laughs> but, um, you know, just it, it's an overall good philosophy to try and stay away from processed foods. Right. So exactly. That's Cause, a good one. Right. Because the processed foods have a lot of things added to them. Yeah. You know, such as like if you look at the labels. Right. On them, a very high salt content often. Right. Which we, I mean, you need salt, but you don't need that much salt. Right. And especially if people are struggling with any kind of blood pressure issues, having a lot of salt in your diet is not a good thing. Right. And a lot of chemicals generally. And a lot of chemicals. And remember when you're using uh, those boxed foods, a lot of the money that you're paying for that goes towards the packaging, the advertising that the companies Uh, are doing. Not to mention the shelf space in the supermarket, which by the way, they have to pay for. Yes, that's right. Okay, so let's talk about the the paleo diet. Okay. So the paleo diet came from the idea that we were long, long time ago hunters gatherers Mm -hmm. and we really existed mostly on protein and fats and and not to eat anything that has come up come up after the dawn of agriculture. Right. I mean, but it can include, right? Because, like, there are some wild, like, there's wild berries. There's yes, wild. That's fine. Um, it doesn't, the, the diet, the, the eating plan well. <laughs> doesn't include dairy, legumes, whole grains, and potatoes. But it does encourage people to eat fewer processed foods and have right. more leafy greens. Right. But, you know, our, I believe, Dr. Moskowitz, that our bodies have evolved since caveman days right somewhat and we can okay we can have dairy i also want us to think back and remember or you know cavemen or early ancestors i don't think they actually had the longest lifespan in the <laughs> <laughs> that could have been because of the saber-toothed tiger <laughs> well it could have been because of the saber-toothed tigers um you know the, the diseases they didn't have cures for and stuff like that but you know all of it too was at times they really weren't well nourished. Right. I, right. Cause it was, the food was come and go. The food was come and go. Yeah. I mean, people had tooth decay at early ages, which causes inflammation. They couldn't, you know, eat this, eat their foods and things like that. So, you yeah. know, people looking back, I, I think there's this tendency to look back sometimes and romanticize, mm. you know, things. Yeah. So paleo is not necessarily good or the best plan. Okay, let's go look at gluten-free diets. So, okay. So, so some people need to stay away from gluten. Right. They have an autoimmune condition called celiac disease. Right. Then there are others who might be gluten sensitive right. where they feel better if they stay away from uh, wheat, rye, and barley. Right. And let me just say that celiac disease can be tested for. Mm. It's a blood test and they look for certain antibodies. Okay. So it's so. not like somebody should self-diagnose no. that they have celiac no. disease. Okay. And so gluten is a protein? Gluten is a protein. And it's not bad. Right. I think it's also become like demonized. Oh my gosh, it's got gluten. Yeah. Uh, that's actually a good protein. And actually there's a, a, a product called seitan, which is used a lot in vegetarian cooking, that is actually wheat gluten. Mm. So yeah, so that's a that's a if if you don't have a gluten issue and either right. be tested or you can see like it's easy to know if you've eaten gluten and you don't feel well afterwards. Right, if take you, it out, put it back. You know, right. you can see how you feel, but it, it does. You don't necessarily have to live a gluten free lifestyle unless there's a medical reason right. for you to do and so. And for some people too, if they're just like insen- like a little gluten sensitive. Mm-hmm. So you know, what are the the, the symptoms? You know, could be like headaches. Um, feeling bloated, diarrhea, stomach pains. Mm. But for some people too, it's it's what the load is, which right. is also goes for other things like people who are maybe not have a complete milk allergy, but are lactose intolerant. Right. So sometimes it's not the the product; it's how much. Right. So for somebody who's, um, you know, who's more sensitive to gluten, you know, like maybe having like one slice of bread is like okay, a whole, especially a whole grain or sprouted. Right. Grain bread, um, you know, but then having like a whole plate of of wheat pasta 
might, you know, might be too much for them. And a side order of garlic bread, you know, and a dessert, like a tiramisu or something that has like a cake base. Right. Well, for many other reasons it's problematic, but the gluten load just from that whole right. meal might just be too might much. Be too much. Right. Okay. Another buzzy diet right now is the keto diet, the ke- uh, ketogenic, which yes. <laughs> uh, sets very strict limits on how many carbohydrates you can have a day. Right. Um, so this forces your body into something called ketosis. Right. Um, and what is ketosis? So ketosis is where your body does not have any stores of the of carbohydrate. Your body does store some carbohydrate, some sugar. It's called glycogen. Okay. It's in your muscles. And so your body kind of goes, but there's only so much. So your body just sort of like goes through that. And then it starts, it does start burning fat at that point. Okay. Um, And converting it. So that's back. why people would want to be in that ketosis state so that right. they start burning fat. Right. But and it is very effective for that. And actually your brain can use the fat for, um, for energy. Right. So, it, so keto is good, bad with the... the problem with keto as I see it is first of all is staying on it. Okay. You know, it, it's like you can't, you know, it's, it's, it's protein. Right. And then it's like non carbohydrate vegetables. Okay. And then you can have maybe like some berries and stuff. I think a lot of people would have great difficulty staying on that. Plus, how are you going to cook for your family that way? Yeah. You know, I mean, kids can be on it, right. technically speaking, but it's just, it's it's really, really hard to stay on it. I mean, it, at, the concern I have too is you're going to end up probably eating a lot of meat or more protein. animal, or more animal protein. Mm-hmm. Because you remember... Back when we talked about macronutrients, we talked about like combining proteins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so first of all, on a keto diet, you can't even have the beans. You can't have the beans. The carb content is way too high. Right. Because you're supposed to have 20 grams of carbohydrates the whole day. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So. Which is about as much as in a a bagel. No, bagel probably has more. Probably has more. Yeah, yeah. It's probably as much as like one slice of whole grain bread. Mm -hmm. I I, I, I mean, it's. It's very limited. Or. Whole grain, maybe seventeen grams. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's um, it's extremely limiting. Mm-hmm. So it means you're going to end up eating a lot of higher fat, right? Products, or the higher protein could pro- put stress on your kidneys. I, and right, exactly. Right, uh, if you have any issues. kinds of right, exactly. Okay. Um, and yeah, so you know, I think there have been some studies that it was fairly effective for some people like, to do weight loss with because it helped burn up their body fat right. but honestly what these people did was they did only up to three weeks of it mm. and then they did the mediterranean diet in between uh-huh. for like four to six months oh, okay so it's a so very they cycle sh- through it. it's a very short term the best for short term usage right and okay. it did result in a 10 percent body fat decrease which is, which is fairly significant which is fairly significant right um and it also like lowered their blood sugar levels and and they didn't regain the weight Oh, that's important. Well, also because they were on the Mediterranean right. diet in between. Right. So I think there are times to use it, but I don't see it as a long-term okay. diet for most Great. people. There right. are some people who do it, but... Yeah. Okay, so juice cleanses. We all uh, see all the uh-huh. juice bars that have popped up in the last few years. Um, it's really spending a few days to a few weeks only drinking liquids. Right. Um, so you can get them from those stores. You can make them at home. Um, so... The the possible problem with that is, first of all, if you're drinking juices that have a lot of sugar, right, that could throw you off. Um, and the body doesn't really need to reset and filter itself. No. It, you don't need to rest your digestive system. No. It works perfectly well right. without taking that time. Right. Um, so, and again, you probably lose weight if you're just drinking juice for three days. But, right. yeah. um, and my concern is, also, like we're going to get to this in another um, podcast, but you know, c- kind of that sort of fruit sugars and stuff like that. You know, in your gut, there's a whole thing about uh, your gut bi- biome and yes. good bacteria and stuff like that. And you may sort of select out some of your good bacteria by by just feeding it like that. Right, right. Um, that might not be the best thing for your gut. 
Right. And I don't know this whole idea of like, you have to completely cleanse your digestive system. Yeah. I don't think for most people that's a really good that's, plan. Right. You really don't want to do Cause that. Because you, you lose, you're throwing the, the good stuff out with the bad stuff. Um, okay. So the last one is, that's all everybody's talking about right now, is intermittent fasting. Ah. Okay. So as religious Jews, we know all about fasting. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, uh, but not like this. And not like this. But um, this is a, a very restrictive it could be eating every other day. It could be stopping yeah. eating after a certain time. Um, so it's it's not it's it's hard yeah. to do, right? But maybe it will stop you from eating mindlessly, right? Yeah, and the way I've seen it most presented is where you restrict your eating to like eight hours, an eight hour window in the day, right? And you don't eat at um, other times, right? And there are some studies looking at like it is helpful for like. Um, you know, your, your cholesterol and, and blood sugar and things like that. Again, the difficulty with that is sometimes working this around a family setting mm-hmm. can be challenging, right? you know, so, cause it basically means if you're starting eating with breakfast, which you should be eating breakfast, you're not going to be eating dinner. Right. And, and this would be, <laughs> I, I, this would be so hard for me to do just yeah. because I, I need to keep that blood sugar going. So right. uh, what it seems is the Mediterranean diet is great option um eating right. for health uh mm-hmm. really focuses on each individual person and eating those whole foods and it would just seem that changing our diet right now is a much cheaper way to treat any diseases down right. the road and the united states spends more money per capita on health right now but it doesn't really look like we are that much healthier than other nations right um, than other western nations than other right. western nations right. so um yeah, so it seems like that one is the best. Yeah. That overall. Overall. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Okay. Thanks, Jill. And that is it for this episode of Let My People Eat. Please visit our website at letmypeopleeat.com and leave us a comment. Get in touch at our email at podcast at letmypeopleeat.com or call us at 317-659-0004. Post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook with the hashtag let my people eat podcast if you like this show please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on itunes tell your friends and family and subscribe to us on apple Podcasts. and please remember that although we are certified professionals this is not a medical advice podcast no content posts or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance always speak to your own health practitioner about making the right life changes for you Until next time, I am Jill Sharfman. And I am Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us. And go in good health.